Hi, welcome back. We're here for video two of the series where I'm showing you how I built a music studio in my basement. This is video two, looking at framing and isolation. So in the first video, we covered planning and design and that original uh, idea behind how I wanted to approach the space. And now we're getting to the actual construction of building the frame for the room and isolating it from the rest of the house. The first thing to clarify is that I'm not going to be teaching how to frame walls in this video. I'll be showing the decisions I made about the core structure of the studio to achieve sound isolation level of about 60 decibels between the music studio and the rest of the house. My strategy for achieving this starts with a comparison of wall framing techniques that I found in the Roger Vey book I mentioned in the first video of the series. You can see that having two separate wood stud frames with two layers of drywall on each side has an STC rating of 63. My plan was to take this approach and make sure I was consistent all the way around the music studio, including the floor and ceiling. If you build the walls like this, but neglect the floor or ceiling, you could end up really disappointed with the results. And doors and windows are another opportunity for weak points, and we'll get into that a bit later. One of the first things I researched was preventing structure-borne sound. There are two main types of sound we need to worry about in the studio, airborne sound and structure-borne sound. Airborne sound is anything traveling through the air, and this is how the SDC ratings are tested. However, if you have kids or live in a building that's connected to your neighbors, you know that sound can travel through the structure of the building as well. And this is equally important for me because of the room directly beside my studio. I mentioned in the first video that this is going to be a gym, and here's a current shot of what my kids will be doing in that room. They are really into climbing, and we'll be adding even more climbing options to this room over time. So not only will my kids be loud, but they will also be creating thumping sounds as they climb the different obstacles. In his book, uh, Roger Vey mentions the product DNSB by Mason Industries. I got a quote for it from two different companies, and it was going to cost about $2,300 to get all the clips that I needed. I'm on a budget, so I can't afford to pay that on top of all the wood studs and drywall, which would leave me unable to address structure borne sound in my design. And just when I was about to give up, I came across a few other products that use the same principles. Here's the Sonus Clip DE90 by Regipol. It's essentially an RISC clip with an L bracket, and RISC clips are made by many companies and can be used by, for attaching drywall to walls or ceilings. If you don't have the space for a double stud wall, you could consider using RISC clips instead. Regipol is one of the few companies that takes the RISC uh, idea and puts an L bracket on it so you can use it for attaching double stud walls or other assemblies. The benefit of these types of brackets is that there's no solid connection between the two objects or assemblies. There's essentially a large flexible washer made of silicon in between the two metal pieces. This significantly decreases the amount of sound that vibrates from one assembly to the other. Once I found a couple options, I discovered a lot of very similar products available from several different manufacturers, and most of these products are restricted regionally, so that each retailer has a certain geography that they're allowed to sell it to. So just keep that in mind if you're looking into any of these products yourself, check if they can sell the products to you before asking for a quote. In the end, I was able to get all the DE90 I needed for just over $600. In total, I needed 72 DE90 clips because this product needs to be installed in a two foot by four foot grid in order to hold the weight of two layers of 5 8 drywall on top of the framing. Instructions were very easy to follow and I rented a hammer drill from Home Depot for the concrete sections. Once I got the DE90 installed, I could focus on ensuring that the framing was fully disconnected from the rest of the house, apart from the concrete slab. I used two pre-existing walls that were put in by the builder to hold insulation. These were continuous walls along the perimeter of the basement, so I had to cut the spots where the studio walls ended and the other rooms started. All right, so we've got music studio wall here. The den is gonna be right here, and we have this two inch air gap in between. So I'm gonna cut here, just like I did at the other spot. Cut this open so that they're not connected. And I'll actually have to do it at the top as well, which is going to be uh, more challenging, I think, because I got those electrical wires to avoid. But that's what we're up to right now.
The other connection I had to break was where the pre-existing walls were nailed into the joists for the main floor. So when I got up here, I realized that this is actually just held together by nails. So I just shoved some shims in there, hammered them in. So I brought it down so that if you can see it, we got a nice gap there now. And then I just put in some screws here to make sure that it's held in place. To recap, I've installed the wood stud frames using DE90 clips in a 2 foot by 4 foot grid all the way around and ensured the framing isn't connected to the house in any other way. You have to go all the way with these techniques or you risk having results that are only marginally better than standard construction techniques. There are a few other things to mention in terms of framing for the studio. One of those is an I-beam running right above the left studio wall. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to build the walls for the gym and the studio in the same spot where this I-beam is. Knowing that I was planning to use the DE90 clips and the kids would literally be climbing the walls in the gym. I needed to make sure that the walls would be strong enough to hold all the weight and stress. And there's also some plumbing running right beside the I-beam on one side. I came up with a few designs, but I couldn't figure out a way to make a wall that wasn't partially connected with a box, so I got quotes from two structural engineers. Both quoted me approximately $2,000, and while I was considering that option, although I didn't want to because of the price, I suddenly realized I had been overthinking it. If I moved the gym wall slightly, I could build it floor to ceiling, and the studio wall could be connected to the gym wall using DE90 clips as intended. This was another big relief and another massive savings. It's a great example of some of the blind spots we can develop when doing a DIY project. Before building the box around the plumbing, I wanted to bring it in tighter against the wall. This was gonna stick out quite a bit from the wall and get in the way of my plans for acoustic treatment along that wall. My father-in-law was very generous and helped me with a few things on this project. He tucked the plumbing tight against the wall and then we were able to build a slim two x two stud frame for that box. I wanted the box to stick out no more than six inches from the wall, and in the end, the box only sticks out four and a half inches. If you remember my acoustic treatment plans from the first video, I'm planning a six inch air gap behind the acoustic panels, and now I can hang my acoustic panels as planned on this wall. Another challenge was a small window at the front of the room. This was a typical small basement window from the 90s, too small for someone to climb out of. This window goes up into the joist area and would have made it impossible to prevent sound from traveling through from the family room above, if the only separation was the OSB and drywall. The window would also let a lot of sound pass between the outside and the studio. I decided early on to remove it completely, but was running out of time before the weather started getting colder. So I've done just the first half of this by covering it up and sealing it off before drywall went up. The window looks out under a deck, which I'm going to have to replace in another year or two. So I'm going to remove the window from the outside when I replace that deck. For now, I've just sealed off the window with rigid insulation, some acoustic seal, then framed in the area to complete the wall assembly. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and hit like if you enjoyed the video. In upcoming videos, I'll get into HVAC, electrical, drywall, air sealing, insulation, and lots more. Hit subscribe to be notified when these are published.